I'm Tamara, and this is my presentation on crystallization for food science. For my experiment on crystallization, I chose to make lemon sorbet. My hypothesis was, if the sweetness of a sorbet is derived primarily from corn syrup rather than table sugar, it will result in a smoother, creamier sorbet. As an explanation, sorbet is a syrup of sugar and water that is churned together. The sugar lowers the freezing point of water. The higher the concentration of sugar, the lower the freezing point becomes. Too little sugar will result in an icy texture that cannot be scooped and too much sugar will not allow the mixture to freeze. Corn syrup is more viscous than syrup made with table sugar. So using light corn syrup in sorbet will create a smoother and creamier sorbet. Because corn syrup is significantly less sweet than sugar, more corn syrup can be used. This increases the creaminess without increasing the sweetness. My methodology was to make four batches of lemon sorbet. The sweetener was the only variable that changed in each batch. The remaining ingredients in all preparation methods were controlled in all four batches. And as you'll see at the end, that wasn't quite true. The sweetness for each batch was derived as follows. The control used 100% corn syrup, variable one used 75% corn syrup and 25% sugar, variable two used 25% corn syrup and 75% sugar, and variable three used 100% sugar. So basically light corn syrup is about one third as sweet as the same amount of table sugar by weight. So to figure those percentages, I had to weigh each of the ingredients. This is a picture of the before and after of one of the containers of sorbet. I used the Paco Jet to pacotize the sorbet. So basically I prepared the sorbet base, froze it in the Paco Jet container, and then used the Paco Jet to turn it into sorbet. So my results, the first thing I asked the students, evaluators to rate was sweetness. So I actually did a BRICS value for each of the four variables. And this just simply shows um, the BRICS scale. And that's just based on the sweetness of a liquid. It's based on the percentage of sucrose. So plain water would be a zero on the BRICS scale. You can measure the BRICS value using a refractometer. So we measured using this one in the culinary kitchen. We also attempted to measure the BRICS value using a handheld refractometer, but because that one only went up to a BRICS value of 30 and all of my sorbets were above 30 on the BRICS scale, we couldn't actually see that on the handheld version. So the BRICS values of variations in theory, they all should have been the same sweetness. That was the idea. I was very happy to see that the control, which was the 100% corn syrup and variable three, which was the 100% table sugar were actually the same sweetness, 38.64 and 38.58. There was some variation with variable one and variable two. Um, part of that could have been just how the corn syrup and the sugar mixture settled as it froze. Another issue was, as I said at the beginning, um, I made lemon sorbet and all variables should have been controlled other than the sweetness with the sugar and the corn syrup. But in reality, I was squeezing the lemons rather than using pre-squeezed lemon juice. And so I squeezed all the lemons for the control first, then for variable one, two, and three. And so, if I had pooled those, then there may not have been some variation in the sweetness that was resulting from the lemon juice rather than from the sugar and the corn syrup. But we did get BRICS values on those variations. And then I asked the students to rank the sweetness. And so again, they should have been similar um, since we wanted them to be the same sweetness, but they weren't. With the sweetness rankings, they were all over the place. These are the average rankings, so they don't look too far apart. 5.42 for the control, 6.28, 6.57, 6.42. 6 
But if you look at how each variable was actually ranked, you can see that for three of them, they were all over the place. So for the control, we had a student rank the sweetness as one, which was the least sweet ranking, and then another student rank it as nine with two eights, a three, a five, and a four. Um, variation one was the most consistent, um, a five, three sixes, and three sevens. And then again, variation two and variation three were just all over the place from four to nine with variation two and from two up to 10 with variation three. So the subjective ratings of sweetness were not incredibly reliable. Then students were asked to rank the creaminess. And what I would have expected was that the control was the most creamy because it did have 100% corn syrup. And that was how students ranked that. Control was 8.28 on the scale of one to 10 with creaminess. And it was descending down to the variable three with 100% sugar was 4.14. So that was as expected. And then similarly with iciness, um, clearly variable three, which was the 100% sugar was the most icy with an average rating of eight. And then the other three were, were fairly similar. Finally, I asked the students to tell me which sorbet was most appealing and which was least appealing. Again, this wasn't particularly reliable because three students said that the control was the most appealing with two saying that variation one was the most appealing. But for least appealing, two students said that the control was least appealing. So out of seven students, three said it was the most appealing, two said it was the least appealing. And then three students said that variable three, which was the 100% sugar, was the least appealing. And so the value of appealing was subjective of what you would enjoy more. And one student did write, I thought that the control was the creamy, the creamiest, creamiest and least icy, but I liked the flavor of number two the best. And that was what I expected that the control would have the most appealing texture because it was creamier, but because it's 100% corn syrup that can have a off flavor, sometimes a slightly metallic flavor. So the corn syrup would not have the best overall taste, but it would have the best overall texture. So I expected that either variable one or two would be the most appealing to students. Um, and again, we were kind of all over the place with the most and the least appealing. So my conclusion was the batch made with 100% corn syrup, the control was the creaminest, creamiest in appearance and was ranked the creamiest by the evaluators. The batch made with 100% sugar, which was variable three, was the iciest in appearance and was ranked the iciest by the evaluators. The sweetness rankings were inconsistent within the same variation and also did not correspond to the actual BRICS values since there was deviation among the variations by BRICS value. So for future experiments, as I mentioned earlier, if I was gonna do a flavored sorbet like a lemon sorbet again, um, one thing I would do is pull the fruit juice to ensure that the sweetness of the fruit was consistent rather than having separate batches of juice that I squeezed for each variation. But I could also use unfl unflavored sorbet. Sorbet is just a mixture of sugar and water. It does not have to have flavor. And so the flavor may interfere with the evaluator's interpretation of the sweetness. So just taking out that lemon flavor or other fruit flavor may give me more accurate results in terms of measuring sweetness. And then another thing I could do was just measure the bricks value of the sorbet before freezing. So when I put the bases in the containers, I can measure each Brooks value and then adjust as necessary to ensure that the actual sweetness was consistent among the variations. And that was my experiment.